Good day. I am P to the E to the N to the I to the S. Polsky Gamer. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get dinosaurs in the aviary. Uh, now, to prove to you that this isn't a mod on PC, I am literally on PlayStation 5. Alright, now that we've gotten that out and done, and whatever the heck I'm, I'm saying, um, simply enough, there's only a few species you can actually get in here with this glitch that includes the Albertosaurus. Um, you can have as many of them as you want, by the way, it doesn't matter. Um, you can only get one in at a time. Um, you can also have the Ceratosaurus. You can also only get one in at a time. So you might as well pick the colors that you want instead of ram randomizing your colors. Um, yeah, so you can have Ceratosaurus, Albertosaurus, and um, last but not least, the Gallimimus, Struthiomimus, and the Archie, or Aki, you know what I mean. I can't pronounce it. Archionothomimus. There we go. <laughs> that was a, that was a sh like a stab in the dark, I guess. But um, also just a little note: you can't actually hear the dinosaur sounds within the aviary because when you're in the aviary, it mutes all the dinosaur sounds, so you can only hear the pterosaurs and what's going on inside the aviary. And that's why you can't actually hear the dinosaurs within the aviary because. Um, you're not meant to, essentially. Anyway, um, what you can do, you can actually do this legitimate, you can do this in campaign. They actually make territory out of the space given within the aviary. They actually coexist with everything that's in it, such as all the pterosaurs. Example, um, you can see that he's coexisting with all the the dinosaur, the two dinosaur species, and all the pterosaur species that I have in here, which is actually every single pterosaur species, and as you see, they actually make territory only within. They can't escape. They can't do anything. They're just living within this uh, aviary. Um, you can feed your carnivores only using the goat feeders. So you may need to make a few if you've got a lot of pterosaurs, because um, one food supply usually doesn't you know, give enough to the whatever, you get what I mean. Essentially, pterosaurs eat your goats as well. You can't actually place the, uh, you know, normal feeders, which is interesting, because I think pterosaurs can actually eat from it, but you can place that, and obviously you can have your, your fish feeder, but that's only for pterosaurs. And uh, Gallimimus and all the other two are easy to feed enough, because you just place the foliage. So that's out of the way. That's how you, they survive, live in there. How do you actually get them in there? So we're gonna show you boars and girls. Essentially, you've got um, three hatcheries now. I, th I find that the, the uh, best one is the one from the wildlife team. And essentially, just kinda, with the Gallimimus and the, and the Struthi and the Archeornith, you want to place it like that in front of a dome. You don't want it like on an angle. You want it to be as close as possible. And usually only all bar, all, out of all the 10 that go in, only three actually don't go in. So I guess I'll show you how that works. So we've got the Gallimimus. We're going to craft a few of them. You know how it is. That'll take a couple seconds. So we got all 10. We'll see how many gets in. Alright, go my, my young ones. We're actually going to look at it from the outside view. So they do a sprinting animation that actually leads them into the, the aviary. And how surprisingly, one of them didn't make it. I think, honestly, if you have nine, you still only have three that don't make it. So I think when you have ten, four of them don't make it. Which is usually how it works. But yep, they're in here, as you see. Simple as that. Now with the Ceratosaurus and Albertosaurus, you need to do it a little different. So we are going to move our ape, uh, hatchery. I believe they come out through the right side. I, I actually don't remember. Um, I gotta think about it really quick. No, they're gonna come out through the left, I feel like. So you kinda wanna like angle it. So that way, I may be wrong and it may be the actual other side that needs to do it. Uh, the Gallimimus are in the freaking way. Move. Just get out the way! <laughs> Let me build. This is this is very important. You need to have the um, max, not the max size batch, 
but you need at least three dinosaurs in a batch to make it work because if it's only two you're not going to have any go into the aviary all right and i think it's the same with both albertosaurus and ceratosaurus so we actually got really lucky then and got three eggs so we're going to synthesize them or incubate them now as you see two of them just walk out but the third one he runs now i think i angled it a little wrong um, yeah, I did. So, I need to angle it a bit better. You know what I mean? Um, essentially, I'm not going to show you again with the Ceratosaurus. You kind of get the picture. If it's angled a little bit different, he's going in. But I'll show you it with the um, Albertosaurus because, you know, you get, the, you get the idea. It's not like it doesn't work. <laughs> it's just that I angled it wrong, which is very easy to do. And yeah, you, you probably will have some, like, a lot of, um, failed ones. I found a perfect one where, like, they'd always walk in slightly and then they'd glitch in. And then I'd have one where they'd walk in a, a lot and then just walk out. And it kept happening, happening until I moved it and then they were doing the glitch version. So it's really just trial and error, but, like, most of the time it works. Um, right, let's try the Albertosaurus. I know I didn't get the uh, Ceratosaurus in there, but still. All right, we got three in this uh, batch, and I actually managed to make more Ceratosauruses in that time, so I might as well just show you guys again, just to, just to verify that it actually works. So as you see, he's coming in, and he might turn out, he might continue walking in. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, come on, buddy. Go on, go on, get in there. Oh, he turned out. Yeah, see, it happens. It does happen. That means you do need to angle it a little different um, because every time you're going to do it, it's going to do that. Like, I've never had it go in from doing that. Um, so it's just really just an angle process. Okay, yeah, the Albertosaurus is the one that goes the right way. Oh, I'm getting... It's, this is going great, isn't it, guys? Okay, so essentially you need to angle it to the, to the right or the, the other way to get the Albertosaurus in, and then you need to angle it the other way for the Ceratosaurus. I can't be bothered actually showing you guys. You get the picture. You saw the Ceratosaurus kind of go in. It's really just trial and error. I don't want to have to sit here for 20 minutes and stuff around with it. But anyway, guys, you know it works because you can see that I actually have dinosaurs in here. Go give it a try in your own game. I just want to let you guys know I have tried every single dinosaur. Only these, uh, what, four or five? The, um, yeah, five get in, only those five. So don't go try and everything, I've done it. There's nothing else that can do it, I guarantee it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I hope this video was good. I hope you're gonna have a cool Avery design. I don't know what my Alberta sources are doing here. Anyway, uh, have fun guys. Enjoy doing this glitch, it's fun. It, it, it's awesome to see dinosaurs in it. I'd love to be love for this feature to be real and legitimate because I'd love to see like uh, packs of sauropods and other herbivores running through. It'd be awesome. Frontier needs to do it because sandbox, you don't have to add it to campaign or chaos or, or uh, challenge mode. Just add this ability to sandbox. It makes sense because we should have this creative freedom. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Peace.